Our topic for this session is aortic dissection. Our first case is an aortic dissection visible on non-contrast and contrast imaging. There is a crescentic hyperdensity adjacent to both the ascending and descending thoracic aorta. On the contrasted study, you can see the now relatively hypodense crescent distorting the ascending aorta, and the all-important dissection flap is visible on its anterior aspect with a small bit of focus within the aortic media there outlining the back aspect of that dissection flap. So there is that hyperdense crescent on non-contrast imaging. And on the contrasted, you can see the distortion of the ascending aorta. And look at the anterior aspect. There's that small dissection flap and contrast material within the aortic media. And you can follow that hypodense crescent now all the way to the undersurface of the aortic root. So that is a classic aortic dissection on contrast and non-contrast imaging. Our next case is an aortic dissection with hemopericardium. This one is a particularly difficult case, although your attention would be called to a great vessel abnormality by the presence of this anterior mediastinal stranding. You can note a linear filling defect in the ascending aorta and the contrast differential there in the lumen. This obviously is a difficult call as this study was done with pulmonary arterial emphasis, but of course in all patients with acute chest pain, the aortic dissection must remain on your differential. You can see there is an isodense or hyperdense pericardial fluid collection. There is also distortion of the right ventricle, and you'll see in the movie, backflow into the hepatic veins consistent with tamponade physiology. So watch, in spite of the spray and the poor or suboptimal contrast opacification, that contrast differential and a linear filling defect are in fact visible throughout the ascending aorta. In addition, note the distortion of the right ventricle, backflow into the hepatic veins and IVC, and of course, an extensive isodense or even hyperdense pericardial fluid collection. So that is an aortic dissection with hemopericardium. Our next case, another aortic dissection with hemopericardium this one with significant associated mediastinal hemorrhage. You see the dissection flap and aortic medial contrast here. And there, the significant mediastinal hemorrhage, which in this case is causing significant distortion and even narrowing of the right pulmonary artery. And here, again, evidence of retrograde dissection and hemopericardium, another isodense pericardial fluid collection. So there is that aortic flap. You can actually see systolic motion in the dissection flap, if you watch carefully. Also towards its superior aspect, appreciate the displaced atherosclerotic calcification, which can be very helpful in identifying a displaced flap. Note also at this superior aspect, you can see the source of mediastinal hemorrhage, a tiny blush of contrast emanating from that linear medial contrast collection right there. And there it goes down to the aortic root. Oh, and again, note the isodense pericardial fluid collection. And here is that distorted right pulmonary artery 
that again resulting from significant mediastinal hemorrhage that you see originating anteriorly there. So that is an aortic dissection with hemopericardium. Our next case is an aortic dissection with branch vessel involvement. You can see it here at the base of the left common carotid artery. In the posterior aspect of the aortic arch, you can see this wispy filling defect, which represents a thin layer of displaced intima. And that extends into the descending thoracic aorta, where you can see a tiny fleck of atherosclerotic calcification displaced in the lumen. So here again, that wispy and dynamic filling defect extending throughout the descending thoracic aorta. Worth noting again, it has sort of a swirling appearance as it moves with the flow of blood. So that is an unusual appearing aortic dissection with branch vessel involvement. Again, that involvement just at the base of the common carotid being a significant uh, treatment factor. Our next case is, of course, another aortic dissection. That previous case sets you up to appreciate this one, where there is a very faint, but again, dynamic and ill-defined filling defect in the descending thoracic aorta. A little better appreciated on the coronal and on the sagittal views. You can see it beginning there. Uh, a typical type B dissection. And here it is on the axials. You can see again, it, it's very dynamic. You can see it pulsing in the systolic breeze moving all about the lumen of the aorta. And it is quite extensive. A very difficult call ultimately though, given its subtlety on any given cut. You can really appreciate its linear nature though, if you watch closely there. Here it is on the coronal, right there. And best appreciated perhaps on the sagittal. We'll look at that one more time. So that is a very challenging, subtle aortic dissection. Our next case, another aortic dissection again with branch vessel involvement. You can see it right up here at the thoracic inlet. The right common carotid is significantly narrowed with a hypodense thrombus visible there, consistent with the dissection. The dissection is not subtle here in both the ascending and descending aorta. The branch vessel involvement is a little more subtle here. You can see narrowing of the celiac trunk related to the extended dis dissection here at the uh, diaphragmatic hiatus. But note also, there's a small wedge-shaped cortical hypodensity in the left kidney consistent with involvement of the left renal artery. We'll see that again. There went the carotid involvement. There is the ascending aortic. And now the descending aortic involvement. Now let's watch for the branch vessel involvement. First the celiac, just at its base, but enough to call it. Next the superior mesenteric origin involvement, I think is indisputable. And now look at the left renal artery. Right there, just wrapping around its base is that dissection, but let's look again at the cortical defect here, telltale sign of left renal artery involvement. So this another case of aortic dissection with extensive branch vessel involvement. Our next case 
is an aortic dissection with branch vessel involvement in a patient with Marfan syndrome. There is a linear filling defect here in the brachiocephalic origin. And of course the dissection flap is visible here in the anterior aspect of the aortic arch. It extends all the way down into the aortic root, which as you can see is markedly dilated in this patient. In addition, there is an incidental rib deformity, which I've seen in more than one Marfan patient in this patient as well. Obviously, Marfan patients have an increased incidence of aortic dissections. You see a very nice example of the branch vessel involvement that I'll rerun here, extending up into the great vessel origins and all the way down into the aortic root. The dilation is predominantly in the region of the aortic root and does not extend significantly up the ascending aorta. And note again that rib deformity, almost certainly associated with Marfan syndrome in this case. So that is an aortic dissection with branch vessel involvement in Marfan syndrome. Our last case is an aortic dissection with coronary occlusion and myocardial ischemia. Plainly visible is this linear filling defect in the aortic root, which at its leftward aspect can be seen to clearly pass over the left coronary ostium. In this plane, you can appreciate the left main and its bifurcation and none of these vessels shows any contrast opacification. Lower down, you can see normal enhancement of the proximal septal and the posterior and inferior wall myocardium with relative hypodensity of the remainder of the left ventricle, consistent with occlusion of the left main. Here on the coronal, you can appreciate that linear filling defect well above the level of the aortic valve. And here at the left coronary ostium, the left main, showing no evidence of contrast opacification. Lastly, there's the normal enhancing septal, posterior, and inferior myocardium, and the relative hypodense remainder consistent with ischemia. So here we have the cine version of the dissection. You can see very nicely that that passes directly across the left coronary ostium. So look at the left aspect of the root right there. And here is the left main showing no evidence of contrast opacification. And the enhancing myocardium in the inferior wall and pro proximal septum. On the coronals, again, the linear filling defect and the unopacified left main coronary. And there is that bit of myocardium that is receiving normal perfusion. So that is an aortic dissection with coronary occlusion and resultant myocardial ischemia. And that concludes this session on aortic dissection.